glad to have all of you here. And we have got a man to preach the Word of God. I think about how important the Bible quizzing ministry is, and then I think about this man who has made it uh, his mission to not only study the Word of God all of his life, but to also be able to communicate its principles uh, into people's lives. And uh, 40 years ago, I was a senior in high school with severe scoliosis, wearing a back brace 23 hours a day. We loaded up three vans and we went to one of the first youth congresses in Shreveport, Louisiana. And uh, I was trying to decide what to do with my life. Brother Jeff Arnold preached a message at that youth congress that was titled, Obstacles on the Way to a Crown. You remember that, Bishop? Boy, it changed my life. And he has changed many people's lives with his ministry. We give honor to this great man of God. Would you welcome to this pulpit and to East Wind, Bishop Jeff Arnold, in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. I need a little help here. Uh, oh, but they taped over something that turns it on. There's a button. Let there be light. Thank you. Thank you for letting me come. It's an honor to be with you, and it's a very odd position for me. I've been preaching uh, almost a half a century, and I've got a few million miles on my backside all over this place, and uh, preaching's my business. I like, in fact, I'm one of my favorite preachers. I really am. I always tell the truth. I like it. And, uh, and, and, and it's very unusual. I told Pastor a few moments ago, this is the first time in almost two years that I've had the privilege to preach a Sunday night service. I've been, I've been shut down from the COVID, and then Sister Arnold had her health issues, and I've been shut down the last 10 months, so I haven't really been able to do a lot of this. And then when Brother Myers was so kind to invite me, I said, man, I, I, I'm going to jump at that. And so before I start, the, 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 the strange-looking fellow back there with the glasses, that's Brother Alex Martinez. He, he's been our Spanish pastor for a long time in Gainesville. He is my chauffeur. He drives me everywhere I go. And I, and I appreciate that. And, uh, and I, I thank you, Alex, for being so gracious and kind to me. And, of course, Bishop Meyer that I knew so many, many years ago when, when him and I were young men. Amen. And so nice to be with you and your sweetheart that I saw a minute ago. And uh, I, I had the wonderful surprise walking down the aisle and Brother David's daughter, who's supposed to be this big, yeah. ran up and gave me a big hug and told me she was David Meyer's girl. And I haven't seen the twins, but the, what, are they 17, 18 now? God have mercy. That's so amazing. Anyway, it's an honor to be with you. And brother, I w just, uh, just give me just a few seconds, okay? You, you took three hours of singing. Give me just a few <laughs> this, this, this guy, I watched him as a young fella, and I watched him grow up, and I watched him labor and work with his daddy, and then the great transition that took place here and this beautiful cathedral you guys built. But he has been a very special, special friend to me personally in situations that I had to deal with and and uh, he proves to me that God can use baptized brains <laughs> between him and his sister and senior sister Myers you guys got more degrees than a thermometer <laughs> and, and I just Thank God for them, because he's. You have been a friend to me. Thank you so very, very much. Why don't we give him a hand, okay? Amen. Amen. I, 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 I want to get into the word of the Lord, and and I'm going to do my very best to to, to preach good, because uh, this may be my last service in my whole life. You say, are you dying? Sure, we all are. 
You're, you're only one breath away from kicking the bucket. And, uh, and, and, and my, my favorite premise across this whole Pentecostal movement is always the same. You need to go to heaven from your last church service. Your last service needs to either be a memorial or a monument. Yeah, yeah, now, let me try it again. Okay. See, I, pre I preached for the bishop years ago in the old church. I told him before, I said, I preach so good, I've never been back. <laughs> and I agree with him. You can't get any better than the last one. That's, that's probably what. Nevertheless, and I was here for the dedication. It's a beautiful cathedral that you have. And, and it's just magnificent to be with you. And the songs, oh, my goodness. You are blessed I don't know. See, you, you just got your song people up here, and you just listen to their singing. I don't listen to their singing. I look at their kissers. And your people are some of the few people in the whole Pentecostal movement that smile while they sing. I, I preach for a living. I travel all over this movement. It drives me nuts to see people being praise singers. It's the joy of the Lord that keeps me going. I'm so happy I need to be two people. Oh. You ain't going to make me afraid. I, I'm an old guy. You can't fire me. I'm already retired. You can't do nothing to me. I just, I just, let me tell you something. If you're really an apostolic Pentecostal believer, it ought to be dangerous sitting next to you. You, you don't know way when some apostolic is going to knock your wig off and dance on your blue suede shoes. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. Keep you standing so long. I'm reading two portions of scripture. Uh, 1 Kings 19. Beginning with verse 1, and Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slain all the prophets with a sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah and said, saying, So let the gods do to me. I think that is the revelation of the dumbest, stupidest, ignorant people that ever walked on the planet. If I was there, I would have said, What gods? Not the ones that couldn't bring fire down. So what gods are you appealing to, you faker, you liar? You ain't got no access to no gods. So she's, she's being real safe when she said, let the gods do to me. There ain't no gods. Elijah just showed him there ain't no gods. Watch this. So let the gods do to me. <laughs> This is so funny. So let the gods do to me. Oh, God, this is so amazing. <laughs> Crazy. That lady's nuts. She's nuts. If I make not thy life as one of them by tomorrow about this time. So what she said, I'm going to cut your ignorant head off, and I'm going to kill you and murder you. Love, Jeff. Now, now watch this. This is so powerful. Turns around, he says, here, watch what he says. And when he saw that, he went for his life and came to Beersheba, belonging to Judah, and left his servant there. And he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, came and sat under a juniper tree. Okay, that's all I want from that scripture. I'm going to read one other scripture from Mark chapter 5. Let me just quote it. I've been too long. Mark chapter 5 talks about Jesus came over, and there was a man living in a cemetery. He was the original streaker. He wore no clothes. And he's living in a cemetery and he's howling like a Comanche Indian. And everybody's scared half to death of him. And they bound him with chains and fetters and he ripped it all apart because he's full of the devil. You ready? And the Bible says, here's the verse. And when he saw Jesus. No, you, no, you missed it. Let me try it. And Elijah, when he saw that. The nutcase. When he saw Jesus. You see, the that 
will make you run away. The Jesus will make you run to him. And, and he ran to Jesus and worshiped him. And the demons that were in him and said to him, this listed in three places, if thou cast us out, don't cast us out into the deep. I wish I had time to tell you what the deep is. Most people in Pentecost don't know what the deep is. You see, devils are afraid of one thing. They're afraid of water. That's why they hate baptism in Jesus' name. They're afraid of water. You just watch. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you for a little while, okay? Just, just, just let me talk to you for a little while. I want to I wanna talk to you about the power of your vision. Or, subtitle, the power and peril of your perception. Not, not theirs, not UPC, not NBC, not Biden. God help us. <laughs> Not Pelosi, not Chuck Schumer, not all the rest of the wackos. Your vision, your perception. Lord, bless the preaching and help me to be a blessing to these sweet people. In Jesus' name I pray. Everybody said amen. amen. You may be seated. Thank you. It's been a long time since I've been here, so I have to re-educate you. I know I look like a college professor, but I'm not. But I did go to college. I can spell and add and all kinds of stuff. And, and when I went to college, when they gave a lecture, you just sat there like a mummy, and they could care less whether you understood or you passed or not, because they got paid anyway. But it's not that way. This is not a college classroom. This is a church. And so, you have an assignment right now. I speak, and you answer. No, you're not getting to say, well, I'm just not emotional. You also are probably a liar. Because you can get emotional out of a brand new hat, a new dress, a new suit, a pickup truck, a shotgun, a five pound bass. So don't tell me you're not emotional. You are selective with your emotion. You go crazy in a ball game and then go like you're a librarian in church. Well, I'm gonna try. You don't know like I know what he's done for me. I said, you don't know like I know how he set me free he brought me out of bondage into his marvelous light i said you don't know like i know i wish i had some ex-drunks i wish i had some ex-liars i wish i had some folks that made mistakes who've been forgiven and washed and renewed and regenerated by the Holy Ghost to make a little noise. Woo! 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 You, you can sit down. I, I, I don't mean to be offensive, Doc. Please, I don't, I, I'm just, I'm an old guy, okay? Just blame it on the Geritol. It's okay. You ready? So, so we played a game. I speak and you speak. See, you need to understand something. Whether you feel like it or not, you are the offspring of a speaking God. Now, God is almighty. Now, it'll take a baptized brain like yours to tell me what almighty means. I ain't got the foggiest idea what almighty means. I can guess at it like you can do everything or nothing's impossible, but there's nothing in this world close to being almighty. So I got nothing to compare it with. But the scripture says God is almighty. Whatever that, whatever that means. And yet, God being almighty never made anything with his mouth shut. He leaves that to his people. Now, yeah. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. 
Now, you're not kidding. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. And God said, let there be light. You ready for this? If you don't let God move, he won't talk. No, you didn't hear me. If you don't let God move, he ain't going to talk. You got to let God move. You got to let... You got to get it? So, 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 so God didn't do anything. He's got so much power that if he walks through a cemetery and open his mouth, he'll have a resurrection. He turned around and said to that dead guy, Lazarus, four days, Lazarus, come forth. Now that's a mystery to me, you college guy. That's a mystery to me. Because the Bible said the dead are dead and they know nothing. Uh-huh. Well, if they're dead and they know nothing, how'd they hear his voice? Uh-huh. Real easy, because the flesh didn't hear him. The spirit heard him. Spirit. And the spirit was in another realm. And when that voice of the creator and clay turned around and said, Lazarus, that voice went into the region of the doomed and the damned and the lost. And, the, and he turned around and said, not you, not you, not you, no, not you. Hey, the boss wants you. Get up. No, you're not hearing me. You didn't get here by accident. God called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. God snatched you out and brought you out into the kingdom of God. That's that's why we ought to praise God. That's why we ought to get excited. You understand where we came from. said, Lazarus, come forth. Now, now I don't want to hurt your feelings, but the Bible says he was bound from head to foot. Well, if he's bound head to foot, then he can't walk. He's bound hand to foot. Secondly, he's got a napkin bound around his face, so he don't know where the hole is either. But if you get a word from the Creator, I'm convinced, now you can say I'm crazy, but I'm convinced he came out hopping. Because his feet were bound together. He was bound hand to foot from the bottom to the top. And you people are not bound. I wonder why you're not moving. He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on the rock to stay. He established my goings. He put a song in my mouth. Even praise unto the Lord. Woo! Woo! Glory! Glory! I'm, get, I'm getting to my sermon in just a minute. You can sit down. You understand what I'm talking about? The power of your vision. The power and the peril of your perception. Because your perception, your vision, is literally by the dictionary, the ability to see, to comprehend, to grasp, to understand, to react and respond to. Now, when I just told you, we are the offspring of a speaking God. God made nothing with his mouth closed. Let, let's, let's practice, class. You ready? I speak, then you answer. God is good. God is great. God is awesome. God is almighty. He's all wise. He's all knowing. And he's on your side. And if God be for you, it doesn't matter who or what is against you. Woo! Woo! You can be seated. I, I, I'm trying to reach for you people that are super glued to your seat. If you were at the Gator game, you wouldn't be sitting like that. If you were watching your favorite team play, you wouldn't be sitting like that. Your little impersonation of Mount Rushmore is really impressive. 
I was preaching one Sunday morning. And we had a sweet lady. She was a Jewish, Messianic Jew, and she knew more Bible than there was Bible. And we had one of them services, man. I preached till my undershorts were hanging down around my socks. My hair was hanging down. My tie was over here. And I mean, we were rucking and bucking and jumping and jamming. We, I mean, it was a racetrack in that place. We, we finally finished, and she walked up to me in the front, and she said, Brother Arnold. I said, yes. She said, I just don't think all this is necessary. And I said, all of what is necessary? She said, all of this, this jumping and this clapping and this dancing and this running. I said, you don't think it's necessary? The Bible says we're supposed to do things decent and in order. I said, well, I think God thinks this is decent and in order. I said, this is too much noise for you? Yes. This is too much emotion? Yes. I tell you what you do, Gertrude. Get your carcass and go down to Arlington Cemetery and go right down there and all those parkas are exactly alike. The grass is mowed beautiful. You can see everything. Of course, everything is dead right there, but it's okay. Man, let me tell you something, baby. When you leave church, you ought to look like you survived a terrorist attack. He's been so good to me. He's been so good to me. Woo! Hallelujah. Woo! Ah, ah, ah. You, you said, I realize that it's not all the emotion and it's not all in the bucket and the snorting and the clapping and the, but I got let me try the other side of the coin it ain't all in the sitting and the staring either and all you folks that pride yourself you're not emotional watch out for those birds flying around you because they circle over things that ain't moving I'm, I'm real careful about who I sit with at camp meeting at conference, or even a general conference. I don't just sit next to any nincompoop. That ain't gonna happen. When, when I sit down and he turn around and said, who's preaching? I go, who gives a flip? What are you, into hero worship? I know we have some preachers we like more than others, and we like singers more than but the issue is not the messenger, the issue is the message. And, 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 and I, now, now, please don't be offended, but I see a lot of wonderful black people up here. I like that. I, I really do. Our, our, up in our church in Gainesville, we got lots of wonderful Spanish people. We got Oriental people. We have African-American people. We have Jamaican people. I like that. I, I think a church is supposed to look like the United Nations. I, don't, I, I, I didn't want to make you nervous. You look funny right now. I, 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 I preach for a lot of wonderful black churches. I, I, I'm a big deal in the PAW, the, uh, Pentecostal Assemblies of the World. They like Jeffrey. I preach for Spanish conferences, and I, I, I like tacos, but I can't speak Spanish. And, but I, I love speaking. Now, I don't mean offend. Don't be offended. I just love preaching for black congregations and black conferences. And, and, and here's why. When you preach for black people, they will tell you if you're doing any good. If you preach for white folks, they'll let you kill yourself. You start preaching in some of those black churches and they say, come on, bring it on. Come on, bring it on. You get to hooping. <laughs> yeah. They'll whip out. You think that purse is a purse? They got a four and a half foot tambourine in that baby. They're going to pull that out and start shaking that thing. Yeah, well, I don't know what you're doing with these two guys, but if you want your preacher to preach better, Get on him. Don't, don't wait till he reaches your approval letter. 
turned around and said, come on, preach. Come on, preach. I need to hear the word. I, I need to hear something that'll change me. I need something that'll help me. I need to get turned around. When you come to a Pentecostal church, you're not going to a penitentiary. You're going to a cathedral of joy, a cathedral of worship. Church ought to be a happening. Okay, before you get too quiet, turn around, look next to you and see if you're sitting next to something dead. If you is, leave. Now, I don't, I don't want to hurt your feelings. Where, where'd the preacher go? Hey, I'm talking to you. You ready? I'm ready. When I was pastoring in Gainesville years ago, we got a bunch of drug addicts and drug pushers. We got them saved. And then we had the standard Pentecostals who just sit there and... And if you had a real move of God, they'd go, glory. <laughs> well, I... I I don't have much class like he's got a lot of class. I don't have much class. I'm just, I'm just a bum from New York City, okay? I, I'm a street machine, so I, in my stupidity, I just turn around. I'm going to come down here in the cheap seats. I can't. Just hold on. I'm coming down here. Here we go. I'm getting next to the audience here. I, you know, that light up there reminds me of my childhood. Spread them. all you want to it don't bother me I was a hellraiser I was a hunky talker I packed a gun I robbed places I've been in jail I'm not making a boast I'm just telling you how good God's been to me and when I went out on Friday night and Saturday night I partied till they didn't dance no more I partied till the band stopped playing I partied till I couldn't drink no more now, and it's so crazy to me. That, to me, it's insulting that we would come to church and just do this little patty cake for Jesus. Well, I'm going to make you answer me. If he's ever done something for you. If he ever answered a prayer. If he ever made a way where there was no way. Woo! At least you can do is give some praise to God. Woo! Woo! Hallelujah. 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 Woo! You, you can sit down. I, I didn't mean to wake everybody up at once. I, I had a bad stroke. And then a couple of years ago, I had another stroke that almost killed me. And I lost 80% of my vision and 90% of my hearing. That's why Alex is so kind to drive me. I can't see after 5 or 6 o'clock. And I got two make-believe hips. I am the original Mr. T. I am Mr. Titanium. So I got two make-believe hips, I got ears that don't work, and eyes that can't see. You ready? You ain't going to stop me. It's joy unspeakable, and it's full of glory. Woo. He said, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. I'll never put on you more you can bear with every test and every trial. I'll make a way of escape. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. 
no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That ought to be enough to wake you up. Woo. Can, can I preach a few minutes here? Hey, the pastor said I could preach a few minutes, okay? Just, just let me talk to you. I just, I'm, not trying to, I'm not trying to razz you up. I'm trying to wake you up. We're living in a hellacious, horrible generation. We're, we're living people with people that are passing laws of perversion and wickedness and evil. And, and, and the government stands against the people and the politicians are against the people. You better make sure that you're walking with God. Because the scripture said there was coming a day when the Lord shall be the hope of his people. Not the government, not the Democrats, not the Republicans, J-E-S-U-S. -E Let him be the hope of his people. You, you, you and me see that I'm trying to get to my sermon. My sermon is about the power, the peril of vision and perception. To me, the greatest guy... In the whole Old Testament, the greatest prophet to me was Elijah. He was, he was my man with the plan from the school to the cool, the cat that knows where it's at. Elijah's my man. He's the firebrand. He's the fireman. He calls fire down from heaven. He ends a, ends a three and a half year drought with a few little words in a prayer meeting. He outruns a chariot 19.2 miles from Carmel to Jezreel. I can see him coming to town just... And out walks Jez. Because no matter how good God's been and how great your victory's been, there's always going to be some devil-inspired fool that's going to put rain on your parade. And Jezebel comes out and says, The gods do to me and more so if I don't about this time tomorrow make your life like one of them. Now, now this is what blows my mind. Greatest Old Testament prophet before John the Baptist ever was Elijah. Greatest. And yet, this old bag runs him out of town. You ready? With only one thing, words. Ah, you bunch of wussies. Now, you didn't get it. You see, when Jezebel showed up, she didn't have an army. She didn't have soldiers. She didn't have chariots. She didn't have spearmen. She didn't have archers with arrows. All she had was words. Now, see, now that, that puts some of you to sleep right now. Don't you get it? Wor words produce pictures. Pictures produce feelings. Feelings produce actions. Actions produce destinies. You're not getting it yet. The power and peril of perception. He saw in his mind that that old bag was going to kill him. That is the weirdest scripture I've ever heard. And I'm not being insulting to the word of God, but it's weird to me. For three to three and a half years, those bozos, Ahab, Ahab and Jezebel, have been trying to kill him. They couldn't kill him. Now, now, let me give you a revelation. This is so powerful. When the Lord turned around to spare Elijah after he called for a drought, he said, now I want you to go to the brook Cheereth. I'm going to have the ravens feed you and you can drink water. Well, then the raven stopped and the water stopped. And he says, I'm going to send you to Zarephath, which is in Zidon. I was sharing this with Brother Alex before I came. I've never heard anybody preach on this in my life. They probably have. I just haven't heard it. He sent, he sent Elijah to hide in Zidon. You probably don't understand, but Zidon was the capital city of the king, king who, who was running that city. Okay? He worked for Baal. Okay? You ready for this? The king of that city was Jezebel's father. Now you, you missed it. See, I, I was waiting for you to come running by. You ready for this? 
Here's how powerful your vision and your perception can be. God says, I can put you in your enemy's backyard and they can find you. I can put you in enemy territory and I can put my hand on you and I'll not any, let anything hurt you, anything destroy you, anything defeat you. Woo! That, that, that king, Brother David, if I can say that, Brother David, or no, I'll say pa pastor. Okay, pastor, that king's name was Eth Baal. He was the king of the Zidonians. Zidonian was outside of Israel's promised land. He was Jezebel's father. And it's like God has a sense of humor and says, Jezebel and Ahab are trying to find you. I'll put you in a father's backyard. You're not getting it yet. Your perception, if you get it right, you can see that God will protect you. He will not let hell have its way with you. You are trophies of grace. You are bought with a price. You are the house of God. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are the bride of Christ. Hell's not going to have access to you. Can I preach a few minutes? Just a few minutes. I, I'm not used to preaching on Sunday night. So I, I just, you know, I appreciate the seven or eight of you that are standing up. That's wonderful. That's great. I can't see real good. They got that police thing on me, okay? <laughs> you, you, you just got to get the, watch, your vision, watch, your vision will either deliver you or defeat you. Your perception will become a prison or a pathway. Now, when that old bag gave that letter and threatened him, he ran away because his perception was, it's over. I can't believe it. The greatest Old Testament prophet to that date. And he lets this note from this old bag. But then come to think of it, how many times in my life I have had words come to me from the devil, sometimes hiding in the mouth of God's saints who have said things to me. And, and, and cause fear to go. You see, words will either give you faith or fear. It, it, was, it, will, it will either vanquish you or give you victory. Words will either paralyze you or provoke you to act. I read a statement by a fellow named Goth. Who, he said, belief without action is just disease. But belief with action produces deliverance. Now you can say what you want to and just sit here like your little mummy impersonation. That's fine. But let me tell you something. You didn't get the Holy Ghost sitting on your duff. You didn't experience forgiveness with your mouth shut. You had to do something. You had, you you had to see that there was hope for you, that there was mercy for you, that there was grace for you, that there was pardon for you, that there was forgiveness for you. Your perception provoked you to act. Woo. Can, can, I, can I preach a few more minutes? I don't know what time it is. I, I don't, okay, I, it's, it's, I'm, getting, I'm running out of time, okay? You understand? Your vision will hold you hostage or will help you. Do you realize that scripture I had you read about the original streaker, the madman of Gadara who wore no clothes? He had a legion of devils in him. Now, now you're the baptized brain, Reverend. You can answer later. But all the, the study that I've done, a legion can be 2,000, 6,000, or 12,000 depending on where the statement is made. So if I take the low figure, 2,000 demons. Now that blows my mind. If you got 2,000 demons in you, that means that demon got to be this big.
And he's got, he's got 2,000 in him. You ready for this? Okay, all you super glued folks, here's your chance. You ready? And 2,000 demons could not stop him from worshiping. What's stopping you? Woo. Hallelujah. Sit, sit down, sit down. Sit. The Bible said, and when he saw Jesus. Now remember, when Elijah saw Jez, he ran away. When this naked guy saw Jesus, he ran to him. And the Bible said he worshipped him. Now, if you read it carefully... He's the one that saw Jesus, and he's the one that came to worship. But the speaker changed. The spirit inside him starts talking and says, Have you come to torment us before our time? Now watch this. This is so powerful. He, there's three renditions of this story. And one of the renditions say, And the demon said, If thou cast us out. So I want to ask you a question. You, you bunch of holy rollers in Myersville. You ready? Have you got as much faith as demons do? Now that went over like I'm talking to the Methodist conference. I'm going to try this again. Those demons said, if you cast us out, which means our vision of you and our perception of you is you can throw us out if you want to. Do you have as much faith as a demon has? I, I, I'm, I'm not done, but I'm getting close. Okay, just stay with me just a minute. I'm going to go over here where the living dead are. <laughs> are you ready? So powerful. He said, if you cast us out, don't cast us out in the deep. He said, uh, there, there's a herd of pigs over here. Uh, let us go into the pigs. Now watch how much trouble Jesus had with 2,000 demons. You ready? Go. And if you've got a habit, and you've got a sin, and you've got a failure, it's just as easy for him to say, get out of here. Go. Forgiven. Free. Woo! Because he's on your side. Woo! No, no debate. No debate. No argument. No huff and puff and blow your house down. Just go. And 2,000 demons went and went into the pigs, and the pigs committed suicide. Why? Because even pigs are smart enough to know not to put up with spirits that humans do. Oh. Sit, sit down. I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm getting back to my notes over here. I need to read these notes because this is good stuff. Now watch. Watch. The Gadarenes' vision and perception of Jesus brought deliverance to him. But then the people of the city come out who were allegiant to pigs and they, their vision of Jesus was, you're a troublemaker. You've messed up our income. You've killed our 401k. You've stopped our retirement. Get out of here. And their vision asked their deliverer to leave. I wonder how many people in this church you don't mean to, but consciously or unconsciously, when the Lord has tried to help you, you've asked him to leave you alone. The scary part is he will. No problem. I'll leave. Ain't no problem. Then he goes to Nazareth where he was raised and he go up and he goes, well, if you read that in the scriptures in Mark, he goes to Nazareth and they are offended at him. Because their perception is, oh, that's the carpenter. Their perception should have been, that's the creator in clay. They should have perceived, that is deity in dust. But all they saw him was a carpenter whose family they knew. 
Now watch. And because of their perception, they bound him. And he could do no mighty work, save he laid his hand on a few sick folk and healed them. Now watch this, Reverend. And he went around the cities and he taught in their synagogues. Now, now I don't want to be rude to you. I'd probably never be here again, okay? But I'm a part of UPC. I'm not leaving. But this is concerning me. Our movement, we are starting to be like that. We would rather hear a sermon than see a sign. We'd rather hear another message than experience a miracle. And so they traded the supernatural for teaching. He wanted to heal everything in the place. Now, you've got a wonderful church, and I'm not here to in any way damn or condemn or criticize, but I would like to ask you a question. What kind of church do you Myers guys want? Do you want a Nazareth church? Or do you want a Capernaum church? Because the Capernaum church said he laid his hand on every one of them and healed them all. I don't know about you, but I want God to throw his weight around. I want God to make bare his mighty arm. I want God to confirm his word with signs following. Uh, um, what, is it? what time is it now? Uh, 7.52. Okay, i got just a few more minutes. Please listen to what I'm fixing to tell you. You've got to understand something. That the miraculous and the supernatural and the power and the glory of God, it is released and activated by our perception and our concept of God. Their, their vision of Jesus defeated them. Israel's vision and perception of God defeated them because their perception and vision of their enemy was greater. Now listen, Israel was pregnant with promises. Please don't get offended what I'm fixing to tell you, okay? Listen to me. The promises of God are not self-fulfilling. I don't care what they tell you in Bible school. I don't care what they tell you anywhere. They're full of hot air. They don't know what they're talking about. The promises of God are not self-fulfilling. The promises of God are revelations of divine intent. When God gives you a promise, he's saying, this is what I intend to do. Now, how are you going to help it get to pass? Israel was pregnant with promises but they died outside the promised land. Can you see them walking 40 years in the wilderness as they're falling over in the dirt and said, I got a promise. I got a... Yeah, but if you don't act on the promise, if you don't perceive that the promise is yours, if you don't envision that promise, it becomes a prison house and not a pathway. And I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings, but you better hear me. God doesn't own a Timex. Now that went over like a lead balloon. Let me help you again. That means you can't hold him to your timetable. I've had God promise me things years ago. They haven't happened yet. That doesn't mean they're not going to happen. God's got a timetable. God's got a season. God knows when he wants to do what he wants to do and how he's going to do it. Yeah. Give me just a few more minutes and I'm done. It's just, I, I'm not really done. I just have to leave. You just watch this. In, in Matthew 8, the Bible said a leper ran up to Jesus, took his life in his hands. Because if you got close to anybody as a leper without crying unclean, unclean, you had a ceremonial law how far you had to stay. He runs up to Jesus and says, if you will, I know you can make me whole. I think that's where all us Pentecostals are. We are convinced he's able. We're just not sure he wants to. Oh, my if you will, thou canst make me whole. Watch the debate. As far as I know, he's the only guy recorded in the New Testament that ever doubted whether it was God's will to be healed. 
Because the if was with him. If you will, I know you can make me whole. Now watch Jesus end the debate. I will. And he laid his hand on him and healed him instantly. My wife's had a heart attack and a triple bypass, and she's in a process of dying if the Lord doesn't help her, and all the doctors have given up on her, and I've got thousands of people all over the movement, maybe some of them here, and I'm praying every day that God will fix my wife, and I was talking to Alex on the way down. I said, Lord, all you got to do is walk in with one finger and go, and her heart will start working again. All you got to do is whisper, behold, it hasn't happened yet, but I haven't stopped believing. I haven't stopped praying. I haven't, st I'm going to hold on. Why? Because my vision of him is he's the great physician. He's the healer. He's the deliverer. He's the master. He's the almighty. He's the all wise. He's the all knowing. And he's on your side. Can I have five more minutes? Five, five more minutes, okay? I, I'm not trying to turn this into a cheerleading thing. I just, I just want you to get a hold of this because it's so powerful. If you don't remember anything else I say, remember this. Perception is always greater than reality. You, you, you're going to have to chew on that a while. See, your perception can override the reality of God's promise and will and purpose. That's what happened with Israel. Their perception of the power of the enemy stole the promised land from them. It was only Joshua and Caleb that said, we can take the land. Let's go. Don't you get it? Israel's perception of the invincibility of Goliath filled them full of terror and fear. And they were afraid to fight. But here comes this little freckle-faced kid. The Bible said he had a fair countenance that was comely. He just comes walking out. He says, I'll take the, now I'm paraphrasing. I'll take the big slob on. Let's go. Nine foot six giant. I'm a little freckle faced kid. I ain't afraid. I'm not being braggadocious. I'm not being boastful. Here, here's why I'm going to go fight him. Because my vision of God is faithful is he who has called me, who will also do it. I have been anointed to be the next king of Israel by Samuel. So this problem and this situation cannot take me out. And if you've been anointed, you got to hold on. Woo! You got to hold on to your promise. Even though it seems like it's being delayed. Listen to me. Delay is not denial. Delay is not denial. I'm, I'm almost, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Woo. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost. Said, and you got to get it. Your enemy, like Goliath, looks bigger and looms bigger than you. And he runs his mouth. He said, come to me, you little punk. I'm paraphrasing. You little punk, you little weasel. He said, I'll feed your flesh to the fowls and the creatures. See, your enemy wants to do things. Mess you up with the vision and mess you up with his voice. Well, guess what? God wants to give you his vision and God wants you to hear his voice. And, and David turned around to the pastor and said, said the Lord, he helped me when I dealt with a lion and he helped me when I dealt with a bear. And this Goliath, he ain't going to be no problem with me. I'll take him out like a bad headache. Listen, you can fake the biggest thing in your life if you look over your shoulder and remember some of the victories that God has given you. Some of the times that God brought you through when you didn't think you were going to make it. But God, who is faithful, will help you to the end. I, I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to come to a conclusion. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm having such a hard time. You got to understand your belief, your belief, your, your vision, your perception of God needs to be greater than your perception and your pronouncement of your enemy. Because whether you believe me or not, we are all dealing with a trash talking devil. 
He talks trash all the time. I, 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 years ago when I was in the Air Force in those days, I used to fight. I used to box. And, 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 and I used to have a great uh, admiration for Muhammad Ali. Okay? But Muhammad Ali was not only fast, you know, sting like a bee, dance like... But, 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 but he talked trash all the time. All the time that he was... Pay, oh, come on, chump. What you doing? Can't you lay no glove on me? Just insult the fire out of here. And your adversary will whisper trash to you, talk trash to you. If you fail once in a while, he'll make sure he camps a condo at your failure. Can I help you with this? You may have failed, but you are not a failure. You may have made a mistake, but you are not a mistake. God wants to pardon you. God wants to forgive you. God wants to restore you. God wants to lift you up. God wants to bless you. Woo! What we need to ask God for tonight is a fresh vision of how good he is and how great he is and how faithful he's been. And what he plans on doing is mind-boggling. Okay, give, give, give me five minutes and I'm done. Just five minutes. I, I'm, I'm sorry it takes so long. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling where's the bishop? Here's my bishop. Bishop, you preach this a hundred times. Paul is on his way. Paul is on his way to Rome under a divine mandate. You ready for this? You can have a divine mandate and all hell break loose. That's right. I'm waiting for you wussies, the words, amen. amen. Well, I've got a promise from God. And your adversary says, that's okay. I got lots of problems waiting for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have a real hard problem with a bunch of Pentecostal wussies that the wind is always going to blow at your neck and not your face. I get so sick of dealing with Pentecostals all across the movement that they got a little paper cut. Have you seen the size of my paper cut? I've got a paper cut. Oh, she, she didn't shake my hand. Well, he didn't say hello. Well, maybe you're a jerk. Maybe not. they don't like you. I don't want to hurt your feelings. I passed it for 36 years. There were lots of people in the church I didn't care for. I did my best to get them to heaven, but they were a pain in the neck. There were some people in our church. We shook hands all the time. I know you didn't do that, but we shook hands all the time. And there were some people in the church. I passed it 36 years. I did my best not to shake hands with them. I would smile and say, mm-hmm. You know why? They had a disease. It's called doubtitis. You go to shake hands with them, and I said, Man, this is a day the Lord has made. Yeah, it's probably going to rain. Well, man, ain't God good. You see, yeah, and I got a lot of hell and trouble. I said, listen, you little wussy, I don't care how much hell and trouble you got, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And if God be for you, who or what can be against you? You ready for this? If you'll see God like he is and perceive God like he is, you are unbeatable. I'm, I'm trying to close, Rev. Sit down. I got to say one more thing to you. You ready? There's a word that I've not heard until just a few years ago, and I'm 77. I know I look 40. I'm 77. You ready? There's a word called immutability. I never heard that in my life. My dad never said that. My mom never said it. I never heard anybody of you. Immutability. What in the name of good sense is that? Well, it literally means the inability to change. The inability to vary in substance or ability, wisdom or knowledge. So watch this. 
So the immutability of God guarantees the performance of His promise. God is so perfect, He can't get greater. God is so perfect, He can't become less. Now, see, I, I thought you Baptists would re be running on that one just then. God is so great, He can't have a bad day. He can't ever fall below His best. He's always good. He's almighty. He's all wise. He's all knowing. He's full of grace. He's full of mercy. He's full of love. And he cares about you. Come on. Just stand with me now. I've, I've, I've not preached my message, but I, I just did a few highlights here. I just got one more little thing about vision. Now, this is just your homework assignment. I want you to go home and read Acts 28. Paul is on his way. To Rome under a divine mandate and he goes through Eurocladon and the thing wrecks his ship now I love this in the middle watch this in the middle of this Eurocladon which is a cyclonic storm okay and the and the and the Sun and the moon and the stars have not appeared for days and he's in total darkness and the winds blowing and everything's going crazy in the middle of the crisis typical Pentecostal preacher be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. No, you missed it. Let me try again. In the middle of all the hell and the fear and the chaos and, 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 and the, the, the messed up situation, here steps up to preach him. Uh, be of good cheer. For there stood by me this night an angel of the Lord, whose I am and whom I serve. And he told me, Paul... You're going to go to Rome just like you were promised. Yeah. And, and because of who and what you are, God has let you have the 276 people. They're all going to be saved because of your walk. Uh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. The man does not claim perfection. Right. And those of us that know that say, Amen, brother. <laughs> but guess what? As long as the mantle of God is on this guy... And he's doing his best to take you to the city. You need to stick with him because people are going to be saved because of him. Jesus. Because of him. Just, just remain standing. Watch this. So they, they go up on the, on, the, on the land and Paul, typical Pentecostal preacher. Pentecostal preachers are whacked. It's never hot enough for them. They got a fire burning, but they got a Pentecostal preacher there saying, my God, I'll freeze to death at a heathen's fire. Because the heathens are the one that made the fire. He turned around and he said, man, I'm a Holy Ghost preacher. I got to get some more wood. And he starts gathering up more wood. Don't be upset that when you try to make the fire hotter in your life, the adversary will attack you. Okay, I wasn't going to say this, but I'm going to say it now. The next time you have a bunch of opposition and hell and chaos, remember what Jeffrey Arnold told you. Opposition is simply flattery from your enemy. The, I used to play football for the Air Force for three years, 62 to 66. We play football. Now, I don't, I don't know, you don't know what that game is, so I'll have to ex describe it to you. And, and these guys run and they cackle each other. Well, you pass down to the end receiver or the fullback or the halfback runs and they make 70, 80 yards in a thing. You get within 10 yards of the goal, the whole defense changes. The normal human beings are taken off the field. Bruno Brzezinski and his brother come walking on. Bruno has no nose that's straight. He's got three or four teeth that are gone. His lip is broken over here. His neck starts around his ears. He weighs 350 pounds of grizzled muscle. Yeah. Him and four of his buddies 
line up on the line and they smile at you through their missing teeth and they say listen here twinkle toes you may have got 80 or 90 yards on the last goal on the last game but you're going to play hell on earth to get this next 10 yards listen to me those of you that are having more resistance and more opposition than usual you are closer to your goal than you imagine you are nearer to your answer than you imagine have you ever thought about in the news whether you watch the news or you listen to the news you read the news you play on the internet whatever you do i have never heard or seen a report anywhere where anybody attacks a bag lady she walks in the most worst areas, ghettos, crime scenes. She pushes her little basket with tin cans and junk that she's got in there. Nobody robs and attacks a basket lady, a bag lady. Why? She ain't got nothing of value. Why do you think the adversary wants to attack you? You got treasure inside of you. You got divine DNA inside of you. You got the divine nature of God inside of you. So I don't know what you do here. I don't know how you do it. I'm just going to do it this way. Tell you what, I'd like for you, if you could, if you would, if you're not afraid, I'd like for you, you either build an altar where you're standing or if I could get some of you to come up around the altar, and all I want you to do is ask God, give me a better vision of you. Give me a clearer perception of your purpose and your plan for me. Because if your perception is wrong, it gives birth to fear, anxiety, and worry. If your perception is right, he gives you power and confidence, faith and assurance, because expectation is always the birthplace for the miraculous. Woo! Come on. Come on. Let's pray. Come on. Ask God to help you. Lord, touch my eyes to see. Lord, help me to have a better sense of perception, to realize that you are not going to forsake me in my darkest moment. You're not going to leave me in my greatest crisis and trial. And even when I don't feel you, your word is still going to work in my life. Woo! Come on, let's pray. Come on, let's pray. Woo! Come on, let's pray. Come on, your vision will be your victory or your defeat. Your perception will paralyze you or provoke you to act in faith. Woo! My God.
I'm doing this at the request of the pastor. Just as a last thing, I never did finish telling you. Remember when Paul got, got washed up from that Eurocladin and he washed up and he tried to make the fire hotter? Watch. The Bible said a serpent came out of the heat. Now that's a revelation. He didn't come out of the fire because a snake can't live in fire. Neither can Satan. He's attracted to heat. So the more Holy Ghost heat you get, the more the adversary is going to be attracted to try and stop you. Now watch. The Bible said that the, that the viper bit him, lanced out to his arm and bit him. Boy, what a sermon that is. Time to shake off the serpent. And he, he shook off the serpent. And watch what happened. And their perception and their vision said this. Doubtless he is a murderer who vengeance has not allowed him to live and the sea has spared him to be killed. And they watched to see that he would swell or fall down dead. But when he didn't fall down dead or swell, they changed their perception and said, he's a God. And then after that, he became a miracle worker because God used him to heal everything on Melita. That's how powerful perception is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. We serve a big God. We just have to have a big vision of a big God. Oh, I tell you, I feel faith in this house. I feel like there's some people here tonight that you've been dealing with some stuff and God has given us a word. He wants us to have big dreams, big vision, big faith. Let's believe God can do anything. Before we leave right now, I want us to just lift our hands, whatever the situation is. I want you to begin to thank God. Say, Lord, I see it. I see it in my eye, in the eye of faith. I see my family being saved. I see my body being healed. Come on. I see God high upon a throne. His train fills the temple. Oh, in the name of Jesus. He's a great God, but give us great faith. You can do anything, Lord. I claim my victory right now in the name of Jesus. I claim my miracle in the name of Jesus. Come on, use your voice and speak it. Speak it into existence. Speak it into existence. I shall be made whole. My son shall be healed in the name of Jesus. My daughter will return back to you, Lord. Come on, my husband will be saved. My wife will be healed. In the name of Jesus, anything is possible. Oh, hallelujah. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 The Bible said if two or three agree together, turn to your neighbor and say, I claim your victory. I claim your miracle. It shall happen in the name of Jesus. Come on, find somebody and agree together with them. God's going to do it. God's on your side. God's going to bring about a miracle. Come on, if you believe it, worship like you can already see it. It's done. It's done. Hallelujah. 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 Victory is mine.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I feel faith in the house. I feel faith in the house tonight. Lord, we believe you that every person that's battling with cancer will be healed in the name of Jesus. You're greater than cancer. You're greater than COVID. You're greater than heart disease. You're greater than diabetes. You're greater than any affliction. You're the almighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. trying to dismiss, but I feel faith in this house. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Give us a new vision of you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. We need more than an organ transplant. We need a vision transplant. I've been looking at the problem, but I'm going to start looking at the problem solver. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Feels like electricity up here. Holy Ghost electricity. Hallelujah, Jesus. We've had prayer requests tonight for people that are sick. We've dedicated babies tonight, asked for God's protection. We've heard the preaching of the Word of God. And I feel like tonight we need to worship God for the victory. People have always said, believe it and see it. But I think see it is believing. You gotta see it in the eye of faith first. And then you'll believe what you see. Come on, you gotta see it through the eye of faith. Go ahead. If you can see it, you can worship Him for it. If you can see it, you can believe Him for it. I see my family being saved. I see my miracle. Shout with the voice of triumph. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Shout with the voice of triumph. Oh.
share this with you, then you got to go. We understand if you want to stay and worship. I'm going to ask the praise singers to pr uh, sing it one more time. But I'm just reminded as they're singing that, shout with the voice of triumph, that triumph and the shout of triumph is what the Israeli army would shout before they had the victory. Before they even went into battle, they would shout for the triumph. It hadn't happened yet. The enemy is still out there and he's large and in charge, but I'm going to shout in advance. That was their shout of triumph. When David said shout with the voice of triumph, he was saying shout before you ever see your victory. Shout before there's ever any evidence that you're going to be victorious. Shout my faith. Thank <laughs> you. 